In this video, I make a digital wall clock with a beautiful walnut bookmatched face out of a $5 clock I found at Goodwill. Let's delve. The first thing I did was use the screwdriver to remove all the screws in the back that held the face panel in place. And naturally, one of the screw holes was way smaller than the rest, so I had to go find another screwdriver that would fit that. Oh. One thing I noticed almost immediately was how short the screws were. They screwed into these special reference points that were elevated from the rest of the face. So for my new face, I would have to find a way to match this design so that the screws oh, yeah. would actually have something to bite into. This will make more sense later on. With the clock in several pieces, it was time to start rebuilding it to suit my luxurious tastes. I found a piece of walnut that had a bit of sapwood and some curvy grain and used the miter saw and the planer to get it flat and square and down to a usable size. If you don't have these tools, another great option would be to use a frying pan. After that, I could turn to the table saw. I've decided to name my table saw Blackbeard because Blackbeard was a pirate, tough as old boots, who was known for cutting off fingers in order to steal people's rings. I do not wear any rings, so that means I am safe for now. I imagine there could be some issues later on down the road if I ever marry someone by accident. The time came to cut the book match. Simply stated, a book match is where you slice a piece of wood down the center and then open it up like the pages of a book, which reveals a mirror image match reflected across the center of the two joined boards. Typically, one would do the slicing on a bandsaw. But my bandsaw could likely pass as a toy rather than a real tool. So I was stuck using my table saw. I still have all my fingers. With the book match cut, I could glue the two halves together. I used a bit of tape to temporarily hold them together while I applied the glue. To spread the glue, this time, I used a USB type A plug. I would give it a 9 out of 10 for this specific job. It performed very well spreading the glue on a very narrow and short piece of wood. However, I see it struggling a great deal to apply efficiently on any pieces larger than this. I put it in the clamps and applied just a bit of pressure. I didn't want to buckle the pieces, so a large clamping force was not used. In the dead of night! I was very pleased with how the glue up went, and if you didn't know the pieces were glued together, you would never notice it. The grain matches up perfectly, just like the voices in your favorite Viking chant. I then took the old clock face and traced out an outline of what I would need to cut out on the new one. From there, I could begin the tedious task of drilling away all the material with a small drill bit. Just kidding, these were starter holes for the scroll saw. One of the most unique and special things about having a scroll saw is it gives you the ability to cut out pieces in the center without having to cut your way in from the side. If you drill a hole in the center of the piece, you can then insert the blade into it and begin cutting from that point rather than cutting from the edge, which is what you would have to do with a bandsaw or a salad. Here I am testing the fit, and you'll notice how thick the wood is. It kind of makes the clock look like it is set far back, kind of like an alley cat lurking in the shadows of the local chocolate shop. So to fix this, I decided to route out a recess in the back of the face so that the clock could sit further forward. Remember the thing I said about having to make sure the screws had something to bite into? This is where that comes into play. I will route out everything except for where the screws go. That way the screws have some material to attach to. 
Enjoy this scenic shot of the back of my head. I have found that it is very difficult to get shots of the router actually doing its job. Maybe that's because I have a big head that's always in the way, or maybe it's because I'm using a trim router to do the job a plunge router should do, even though there's a plunge router directly underneath the table I'm working at, or maybe it's because I'm just rubbish at filming things. The router trick actually worked quite well, and now the clock face doesn't look nearly as thick and clunky as it used to. Now originally, I was going to cut the piece into a circle, just like how the original clock was. But I didn't want to lose so much of the beautiful wood patterns, and Edwin Land once said, an essential aspect of creativity is not being afraid to fail. So I fearlessly decided to try a different shape. I cut out half of a template and traced a mirror image on the clock face so that I could have a symmetrical clock face for the viewing pleasure of all involved. I'm quite glad I decided to try something other than a circle. I personally think the wavy design is quite neat, and I got to keep most of the figured wood rather than cutting it off. I used a belt sander to perfect some of the curves, then a random orbital sander to sand the face, and finally some hand sanding on the edges. Triple sander action. For the finish, I used some clear semi-gloss polyurethane. I brushed on about three coats in total, sanding with 1000 grit before the final coat to get rid of any dust that had gathered. Enjoy my exuberant reaction to seeing the finish applied for the first time. Wow. After the finish had cured, it was time to screw the clock into the face I had made and see if it would actually work. I used a screwdriver to put in the screws. The clock needed two AAA batteries, so I used Energizer batteries. There is a chance that other brands would work too, but that has not been confirmed by me. That's nice. Does it do that always? Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, my love. That's very good. Trotters, look at that. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh yeah, trotters. That's nice. The only thing left to do was to set the time and date. I really have no plan for this clock. I don't intend to sell it, and it really was just a project on a whim. I will likely hang on to it until I finally get around to cleaning up my shop and building a wall to hang stuff on. And then I will likely hang it up. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you would like to, and feel free to comment about anything. I shall respond. I will also pin anyone who writes a poem about sausages in the comments. And if multiple people do it, I will pin my favorite. Until next time, go drink from a shoe.